the No Spin News, Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. Stand up for your country. Very, very important and busy news day. We're going to run it down. We've got it all. The headline, Hunter Biden defies a congressional subpoena. And what he did today was pretty interesting. And that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. So let's run it down. On Wednesday, November 8th, all right, Hunter Biden received a subpoena from the House Oversight Committee, compelling him to go to Capitol Hill and submit himself to a deposition. That would be private. He could have an attorney present. Got the subpoena. All right. Then at 930 today, the day he was supposed to show up, he doesn't show up until 940, 10 minutes late, which you just don't do that. That's disrespectful. Then he gets out of his car and uh, he speaks to the press for six minutes, um, actually five minutes, 45 seconds to be exact. And we want to be very precise here. He did not take any questions. He got back in the car and drove away. He didn't go in for the deposition. All right, here is um, a summation, pretty much, of what Hunter Biden said to the press. Go. For six years, MAGA Republicans, including members of the House committees who are in a closed-door session right now, have impugned my character, invaded my privacy, attacked my wife, my children, my family, and my friends. They've ridiculed my struggle with addiction, they've belittled my recovery, and they have tried to dehumanize me, all to embarrass and damage my father, who has devoted his entire public life to service. For six years, I have been the target of the unrelenting Trump attack machine shouting, where's Hunter? Well, here's my answer. I am here. Let me state as clearly as I can. My father was not financially involved in my business, not as a practicing lawyer, not as a board member of Burisma, not in my partnership with a Chinese private businessman, not in my investments at home nor abroad, and certainly not as an artist. Okay, so Hunter Biden is portraying himself as a victim, and he read the statement written for him by his lawyers. He read. And then again, he got in the car, drove away, didn't go, and defied the subpoena. He didn't go in to talk to the oversight committee. So what happens now? Well, um, he can be charged criminally. I say can be because the Justice Department has to do that. Congress doesn't have any authority in the criminal area. So Merrick Garland, attorney of the uh, attorney general of the United States, would have to charge Hunter Biden. Okay. Congress can issue a contempt of Congress citation, and I believe that will happen. That's what we at least have been told. Roll it. We're disappointed that he didn't show up. I mean, he was just across the way at the Capitol. You think he could have come here and sat for questions? If you do it in an open format now, you're going to get you're going to get filibusters. You're going to get speeches. You're going to get all kinds of things. Uh, what we want is the facts. And the way you get the facts in every single de- uh, every single investigation I've been involved in is you bring people in for an interview behind closed doors where you can get those facts. All right. In another way, putting it another way, a deposition is a sworn affidavit. So if you lie in a deposition, that's a crime. And then the Congress people use the deposition to frame questions. It's, it's logical. Not persecuting Hunter Biden. All right. They're trying to figure out how he got all the money that he got and whether his father, the president, the then vice president, when this all started, had anything to do with it which is a legitimate form of inquiry, whether Hunter Biden sees it that way or not. doesn't matter really what he sees it. Okay. Now, shortly after that uh, statement by Congressman Jordan, the House Oversight Committee posted this, quote, 
Hunter Biden defied a lawful subpoena today, and we will now initiate contempt of Congress proceedings. There will be no special treatment because his last name is Biden. Joe Biden and his family must be held accountable for their corruption. Unquote. All right, so the House Oversight Committee has already convicted the Bidens. I'm not sure that last line was helpful to them. I would have written it differently. Certainly, the House of Representatives has the legal right to investigate government conduct, and Hunter Biden is part of that investigation. Now, since the Justice Department will not do it, remember the FBI, not involved, it's the IRS, and the Justice Department was forced to level new charges against Hunter Biden. I mean forced by public opinion. They had to. They didn't want to. They had that phony deal that a federal judge threw out, but now they have to. So what does that mean now? Okay, so uh, contempt of Congress proceedings. They'll pass that. It'll, be go, it'll go to Merrick Garland, the attorney general, and then Merrick Garland can charge her, Hunter Biden. Really? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it'll be fascinating to see how this comes down. And that's the memo. Okay. Now, yesterday, and if you read my message of the day on BillOReilly.com, and I hope you do every morning, I laid this out to you. It was something very strange that happened. So you'll remember that the president and uh, Zelensky of Ukraine had a press conference. Okay? Only four reporters got to ask questions. Press conference is about an hour late, as Biden is always that way. But this is a pretty serious subject, Ukraine, right? Four reporters get to ask questions? Why? Okay. One of the uh, questions was asked by Reuters, a reporter named Trevor Honeycutt, who I've never heard of. And Reuters is not top-of-the-line news agency. It's a wire service. Okay? And Mr. Honeycutt asked two questions. One about Donald Trump, which you'll hear in a moment, and the other about Israel's brutality in Gaza. Biden listened to the questions, and here's what happened. Go. Thank you, sir. Um, First, a question for both of you. Um, Given the Republican skepticism of the Ukraine effort, do you worry that a second term for President Trump would be the uh, end of an independent Ukraine? First of all, with regard to uh, political support for Ukraine, there is a strong bipartisan political support for Ukraine. Small number of Republicans who don't want to support Ukraine, but uh, they don't speak for the majority, even the Republicans, in my view. With regard to the flooding of the tunnels, uh, I'm not a little bit, well, there is assertions being made that there's quite sure there are no hostages in any of these tunnels. Uh, but I don't know that for a fact. I do know that, though, every civilian death is an absolute tragedy. And Israel stated its intent, as I said, to, uh, to match its, uh, its words with uh, its intent with, word, with actions. He's reading the answer to both of those questions. So how did he know that those questions were going to come? He had to have known in advance So we call the Reuters news agency, which is what responsible journalists do. And the Reuters people said, oh, no, we didn't submit our our questions in advance. No way. And O'Reilly has got to retract his message on BillOReilly.com and take down all the tweets promoting the message. Uh, This is what Reuters said. And then they issued a uh, statement. Okay. And the statement says, quote, Reuters categorically denies the baseless accusation that questions were provided to President Biden in advance. Reuters journalists act in accordance with the Thomson Reuters Trust principles of independence, integrity and freedom from bias. Unquote. Heather Carpenter, senior director of communications for Reuters. Okay, now we appreciate Reuters getting back, but. I don't know how you can read an answer to a question you don't know is coming. Do you? Does anybody? I guess it might be possible 
And in my message today, I say the analysis is my opinion. Okay, it's clearly labeled that Reuters provided information in advance of the question. So it's possible that the White House communication staff, they knew, obviously, they were going to call on Trevor Honeycutt. They knew it. Said to them, well, well what do you think you're going to ask about? Because people do that to me all the time. And I'll say, well, you know, this subject, or I wouldn't ever give them specifics. So you could have said Gaza and uh, Ukraine. <laughs> That's it. But the odds are, heavy odds are, that Reuters gave them a little bit more of that. Maybe not the exact question, but they knew where it was going. They had to. All right, so I thought you would find that interesting. Now, this is not the first time that President Biden has read off a sheet of paper answers to what should be spontaneous questions. That is a violation of every journalistic tenet. But are you surprised? Come on. Are you? I'm not. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 866-501-5201. That's 866-501-5201. Or text BILL to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201. Or text BILL to 65532. Okay, so let's get to the mail. We got Rhonda. Now, I know, Rhonda, throughout your whole life, you have been burdened with Help me, Rhonda. I am not going to do that today. Why? Because Rhonda's a concierge member. She is uh, our vanguard. Pete Hegseth, giving back his Harvard degree, will do nothing to change that school. People who donate to these colleges are the only ones who can afford change. That's true, except for Harvard, (laughs) because they don't need your money, as I pointed out today. Terry Brook Bank, Franklin, Ohio. I would like to know what the Supreme Court is going to decide in the case they are hearing involving President Trump. I would like to know, too. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I guess I guess. But we got to let it play out. I get a lot of letters like, like this one. I, I'm pretty astute. I, I know that. I know a lot of things. But I can't predict the future most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes I, I try. Greg Klipstein, Longmont, Colorado. Bill, you're talking about his memo on the federal government corruption was, uh, he uses a cliche. I'm not going to use the uh, cliche, Greg, because you know that just sends shudders up my spine. You are 100% correct. This uh, used to be an amazingly wonderful country. Sad to say, we are now amazingly corrupt. What can actually be done about it? Well, you got to vote the brigands out. Next November is a key. That's why I'm writing a book on presidents that'll be out in September. This is it. This is a crosswords. 2024 November. Gregory Pappas, Plymouth, Michigan. The latest poll shows Donald Trump leading Biden among likely voters. True. Trump is facing more than 90 criminal charges. Does that mean the majority of Americans don't trust the judicial system? Absolutely, Gregory. Good deduction. Many Americans, perhaps most, know this is a witch hunt. Now, here's the rub. Donald Trump says the word witch hunt pretty much every speech now. So I asked this guy, I said, look, 
When he does that, can he just hold up killing the witches when he does? That would really help me out. Good marketing plan. <laughs> so, yeah, most people know what this is. Not to say that Trump didn't do some wrong things. He did. He did. Stephen Notman, Oregon City, Oregon. Uh, Bill, sounds like you're recommending a Trump Haley ticket. I don't recommend anything. I have stated that would be the strongest ticket for the Republicans at this point in history. Uh, Stephen goes on to say, you also mentioned that it looks pretty shady that Haley was able to amass a $8 million fortune. I don't know if shady is the right word. She did what many politicians do. She used her position after she left to get money. Uh, Cynthia High House, Portland, Oregon, right down the road from Oregon City. O'Reilly, I love your common sense approach. Uh, you speak wisdom. Thank you very much, Cynthia. The news media is a huge disappointment today. That includes cable, a pander to ideology and not to the good of the country. Absolutely correct. That's why we are prospering here at BillOReilly.com. But we don't do that, as you know. Lee Manley, Burlington, Ontario, Canada. Bill, longtime follower. What do you think of our government here in Canada? Left-leaning, Ottawa very liberal. But once you get out to the West, in Canada it's conservative, except for Vancouver. Uh, Quebec doesn't want to be a part of Canada, got that problem. But, um, I, you know, Canadians themselves very much like Americans. They, a lot of them don't want to admit it, but they are. Uh, Tom and Diane Daly, Musick, Pennsylvania. O'Reilly, thanks for always informing us with facts. From WNEP-TV to now, we have followed you. 50 years ago, January. 50 years ago. Was it 50? 49. 49 years ago. I showed up at Channel 16, Scranton, Pennsylvania. That's what the dailies are talking about. They've followed me ever since. What a compliment. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Don Llewellyn, Garden City, Michigan. Uh, all your killing books. Right now I'm working on Killing the Witches. I think my granddaughter would uh, very much like to read them. What order? Witches first. That's colonial. And your granddaughter would probably be interested in that. Then Killing England. That's our revolution. Then Killing Lincoln. If your granddaughter gets through all three of those, wow, will she be have an advantage in her life. That's for sure. Then on from there, if she likes them. All right, Bill O'Reilly Christmas Store. Go to BillOReilly.com. No spin elves standing by. We got the bundle, all 13 killing books. And you get a download of me live on Long Island, which you will like. That is our premier gift. Then we got Killing Crazy Horse, $9.95. That is a gift for you. Okay? A gift for you. It's a stocking stuffer. Witches and Killers, Killing Killers Together, $21.95, tremendous price. United States of Trump, Blue Merry Christmas Ornament, Together, $17.95. Plus, we have the Fabulous Mugs. Come back to me for the Fabulous Mugs, okay? All these things are priced very, very low. And if, you, if you people like me or they, they understand what we're doing here, really primo, okay? So that's a BillOReilly.com Christmas store. Do not be a Philistine. When writing to us, back with the final thought at the moment. Y'all know that I am serious about my faith, which is why I'm excited to have the Halo app as a sponsor on the No Spin News. Halo is the number one Christian prayer app in the world, with more than 10,000 audio guided prayers, meditations, and music. It's an amazing resource for all Christians looking to find peace and grow closer to God. This Christmas season, they are having their Advent Pray 25 Challenge, which features daily prayers, meditations, peaceful Christmas music to help you find joy and calm in this very busy season. It's guided by Liam Neeson and Jonathan Rumi from The Chosen and features the writings from fellow author C.S. Lewis. Try Hallow for three months absolutely free at hallow.com bill. 
That's H-A-L-L-O-W dot com slash Bill. God bless and Merry Christmas. Here's the final thought of the day. I want to take a moment, actually about 30 seconds, to thank our radio affiliates. About 100 stations take the No Spin News audio at night, most of them. WABC in New York, 9 p.m., our flagship. Uh, Then we do the updates uh, during the day. More than 300 stations take them. It's a powerful cannon to get the word out. Um, Hannity, I was on today. We talked about Christmas today. We'll post it on BillOReilly.com. It's a nice conversation, a gentle conversation. But it's so important, the radio, because television doesn't put on any traditional people anymore. Total blackball across the board. Didn't used to happen. I was on Letterman and Leno and Kimmel and Good Morning America, Today's Show, all of that. I mean, many, many, many times, John Stewart, you all saw me. They wiped it out. That's how bad the television industry is now. No matter what kind of book you have, what kind of stance you have, they're not going to put you on. Wrong. News Nation will. I'm on with Cuomo tonight. Check it out. And thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode, anytime on BillOReilly.com. Please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.